thankfully, uh, the Senate was listening because Matt Canavan is here now, of course, the uh, LNP Senator uh, from Queensland, a man who was a straight shooter, a even when man. he doesn't have a, a gun anywhere near him. How are you, Senator? <laughs> Yeah, I'm good, Paul. How are you, mate? Very good. Look, we've obviously been talking about Albo and this, uh, well, political suicide note that he's trying to sign. But uh, the theme of tonight's show is um, the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. Mark Butler, the mm. shadow climate change minister, told Labor what to do, and they did it in 16 and it failed, 19 and it failed, and clearly 22, uh, 25 <laughs> and the next 10 elections to come. What did you think when you heard and saw what they are planning to do and the fact that now it is about agriculture, it is about transport. Well, well, look, Paul, part of me did a little, did a little jig, did a little dance, you know, because uh, this, 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 this usefully for us, for us clarifies a difference uh, between two political divisions. And, you know, at a political contest, you always need to try and define uh, what's uh, unique about yourself, what do you want to do and achieve compared to the other mob. Uh, and what we want to achieve and do, and what I want to do as an LNP senator, is grow and develop our country uh, so that we can have more opportunity for people, especially in my case in country and rural areas. Well, uh, the Labor Party have just adopted a policy last week which wants to shrink and, and, and make our country poorer. Uh, than what it is today. That's its explicit goal and that's what it would do. Now, the Labor Party haven't produced any costings or numbers on this because they know that's exactly what the figures would show and they're embarrassed about it. But do they... This is the thing. I mean, the, the fundamental Rubicon that Labor have never been able to cross. They, were, they lied about it in 2010 about a carbon tax. They paid for it in 2013. The same in 16, 19 and, I believe, in three years' time. The polling that came out today in News Poll, 50% of Australians are not willing to pay a cent more in service of these goals until those numbers dramatically change because we know that it's all well and good for 90 per cent of people under 30 who don't pay bills to have you know a, a, a view on this but funnily enough as soon as you start to pay bills you start to notice well that's right paul and uh, uh the the labor party uh now have made this made this mistake a few times you say but it's not now it's not, it's not just a coincidence, uh, Paul. It's happening, happening too often to just dismiss as bad luck. Uh, it is a fundamental paradigm shift in what the Labor Party uh, stand for. Uh, unfortunately, there's, a, there's an unfortunate tendency in political uh, systems where the name of an organisation doesn't always reflect what it's about. You know, there was the Democratic Republic of Germany, otherwise known as East, Germ East Germany. There's nothing democratic about it. Uh, there's the People's Republic of China. It's not really a government by the people or for the people. And, and now we have the Australian Labor Party, which is not, no longer representing Labourers at all. That's I, been the shift. Yeah, listen, uh, I, I, not, I, being compared to, to the Chinese government here. and the East Germans <laughs> is a bit rich, mate, even for you. Rich oh, that is a I, bit I, rich. I, it, it, I don't mind you bagging us. That's your job. But that's over the top. <laughs> it's, uh, well, they're not. Com I agree, they're not communists, Richo. Eh? They're just they're just socialists. Right? <laughs> they're down that track. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they were a star uh, sign, and, they're socialists and, and with here... communists rising. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, here we have a situation where the Labor Party now aren't. What, what, what are they? You know, this is their defining policy this year. This is sort of their centrepiece. Uh, uh, an older version of the Labor Party, and, and certainly my party, the Nationals Party, would be designing policies to to grow and develop our nation. It was Bob Hawke who built the Burdekin Falls Dam, the biggest dam in Queensland. It's been a great benefit to the development of North, uh, North Queensland. You cannot see um, the modern Labor Party coming up with the same sort of policy. Before that, Gough Whitlam backed the development of the coal-fired power station at Gladstone, which has helped build the aluminium industry there in central Queensland. Again, that won't happen under a future uh, Labor government. There's been a fundamental change here where the Labor Party is now the party of inner city, well-educated, uh, urban elites in this country and they have very little connection to those in rural, regional and suburban areas who want a job, want to provide for their family and uh, are worried about the increased cost of living. Alright, two more because I know you've got plenty more to do and we'll keep talking many times through the year. Uh, firstly, I, I wish you were back in that cabinet but I'm glad that you're not because you can speak as freely as you are right now but good times will come, no doubt. Um, there is a documentary, because of course lefties believe that everything they do must be documented in a sort of historical and wonderful fashion. <laughs> there is a documentary crew that followed Bob Brown on the caravan of no courage to make their way from uh, Tasmania all the way to North Queensland to sort of bring the stop Adani message and of course they came up against the very people who their ideology would screw over. 
This is what Bob Brown apparently says in the documentary about the people who came out from North Queensland to push back. That seminal moment where we saw the reality versus their politics. Faced with this unruly, uh, unruly mob fueled by extreme right activists and politicians, the publicans let, uh, uh, letting the grog flow and the publicans letting the grog flow. Because, of course, the only people who were there were dumb, drunk and stupid. <laughs> This is the logic that they push out there. This will be in a documentary that no doubt, probably like the one about Adam Goods, will be compulsory viewing in schools and shown on <laughs> Channel 2 and becomes the record of the land. What does it say to you about how insulting this man was and how he cannot see the fault in his own actions? Well, well there's a few points to make there, Paul. I, I can't wait to watch it myself. I'll, I'll be a, an avid viewer and I hope they come up and provide a screening in Claremont themselves. Uh, I think it'll go down, go down a treat. But, uh, the other points you make there, this is, isn't this the same mob that stands out front of businesses and stops people from going to work, the same type of people who invade people's farms yep. uh, uh, and their household, near their houses uh, to complain about the great evil of, uh, of producing food for people to eat? Uh, and now they're complaining that a few people wanted to, to, uh, propose, wanted to put forward a different view to their own. I was there in Claremont that day, I was, I was, I was there, and, and look, I'll say up front, at first I was a little worried because the, the, the rally was being held in a pub, it was the best business decision Kel Appleton at the Grand Hotel ever made, <laughs> it was being held in a pub, and I thought, oh, how's this going to work out? Uh, but everybody, I, I mean, all these people, CFMEU members, farmers, local businesses were all there. Uh, and uh, they, were, they were behaved impeccably. Now, yes, they put their views for forcefully. They, they, they themselves protested, and as you do at a protest, uh, shout and put God your position... God forbid they raised their voice. You must not manner. raise your no voice at these people. That day. There was no threat and threats. Sorry? You can't possibly be rude to these people. I, I mean, you, you can't raise <laughs> your voice to them. I mean, fair dinkum. But look, yeah. you, you wait. This will be the record of the land. And just finally, before we go, I just wanted to arm you with some numbers when you go back in and fight the Greens tomorrow. Uh, this is a little segment we do on the show every single night. It's called, Where Did Your Power Come From Today? Have a look in New uh, South Wales. Yeah, today, it. your power came... 83% from coal. In <laughs> Queensland, 87% from coal. And in Victoria, 89% from coal. Cool. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll send all of those to you, Matt, because they're freely available on the National Energy Markets website for lefties to have a look at. How many uh, lefties well, do you reckon look at that website? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. But this, and this is the thing, where they, they want to talk about transition as if it's an easy little move sort of from pulling one plug and plugging into another. Well, in Victoria, the Socialist Republic of Victoria, 89% is coming from coal. Good luck getting that replaced anytime soon without it costing billions of dollars in new infrastructure and billions more in the cost of paying that infrastructure off. And they closed Hazel. And, and if, I can, if I can just say one more thing, Paul. Uh, sure. I mean, the great thing about the likes of Bob Brown and others is they do unite uh, uh, the bush and the productive areas of our economy. As I said at Claremont, you had unionists, you had miners, you had farmers all together. And, uh, that, and, and the, the, the great thing the Labor Party has done last week is once again it will unite those forces <laughs> in, uh, for the future of our country and the future development of our nation. <laughs>